All right, Ian. Mm -hmm. Big, big news when it's come in big, big to the world of video game collecting, and especially sealed, sealed. game collecting. This is water graded mm -hmm. sealed game collecting that's been a, a market that's been pumped and primed over the last two years via articles and Pawn Star appearances and some coordinated effort between individuals uh, between that own these games that help run the graded grading company and heritage auctions um, to pump up the prices of these and we, this is the result we are a little over two years into this a Super Mario Brothers sealed NES box NES game went including the the commission six hundred and sixty thousand dollars Jesus officially making it the most expensive video game collectible ever sold to this point um, the grade is high 9.6 so it's a very high grade obviously that's like pulled factory fresh basically yeah I'm not saying there's there's a, a carton of these because we'll get into who actually owned this later so that part of the reason why I went for this much however Unlike the prior one that was on Paul Stars, that was you know a second print run from like early '86. This is not an early print run. This right. is like a mid-production print run. They are saying from roughly uh, late '86. They are claiming, and I'll get into that claim in a bit. Um, this is what they've done in order to drum up interest. Is point out these are all these little differences we find in the boxes of these runs to make more of a market versus just saying. Okay, this is the hang tab versus non hang tab. This is a sticker seal because for I'm talking about for decades, uh, that's all most collectors either identified or cared about. Yeah, we're like, okay, is it a hang tab or non hang tab? Because that's a division around '87, right? When Nintendo got rid of the hang tab. Okay, the sticker seal stuff. Almost all NES collectors knew about that. The, the Nintendo did the sticker seal at first for the first you know year or so. Correct. That that was all something that I would track other people. But now for for some of these more classic titles like Super Mario Bros. and Legend of Zelda and Mike Tyson's Punch Out, it's like okay, that's not enough. We have to now find these we higher have to divisions, find that. right? Yes. And we talked about before. They've even tried with like Rad Racer and Mega Man. And for most of those titles, it's not going to stick. But for some titles. It, it will. For it will something like a Mario or yes. a Zelda, that's going to that's actually yeah. going to mean it, something yeah, when we'll, it comes to collect. It won't for a Russian attack, you know. Sure. But it will for some of these classic games. So I'm not sh I'm not shocked to see something like this happen. I am still shocked to see this price though. I, I'm very shocked. And before I get into it, I'm not accusing anyone of collusion uh when it comes to this stuff. But when you see something like this happen with no precedent for something to hit this high standard like this, uh, besides one prior sale of a game that came out of a, a version that came out a year before this, I do or, or close to a year, I do have questions because there has not been a gradual rise logically to get to this point. It's not like, well, the last one, Ian, went for 300 or 400, and before that, it went for 200. You know, there has not been a gradual rise. This, this, floored people if and floored me when i saw it yeah i mean I, I was i was surprised there are some people who are not um some people you know aren't quite as surprised but yeah it, it, it's it's wild to see and um i i do think it's still in part and maybe maybe this is all collecting circles but it's in part because of a small group of people who like i said not collusion but they're all passing the same stuff around I feel like they're they're the ones into it. They're the ones, well, they're the ones sort of almost competing with each other. But they're also the ones that have a concerted goal to get this interest going. Yes, it's always the same individuals that come up in interviews or talk about this, or the same ones that maybe email Pat asking me when I'm going to sell my games. We're not talking <laughs> about we're not talking about a lot of people. No, we're not. They almost all know a chunk of each other, um, and again, they all know the people at Heritage Auctions and WADA and they talk to each other. Um, like I said, it wasn't a coincidence in my estimation that the Pawn Star segment for the Mike Tyson's Punch Out comes out the same time two sealed ones were being auctioned at the same time. Yeah. at this, I think for this auction and we'll go over that as well when we go over some of the results what that hit at. So this copy, interestingly enough, was from the original owner that had purchased it Christmas gift in 86, placed it in a desk drawer, drawer where it remained undisturbed for 35 years, the statement said. 
This is uh, the New York Times article did a great, great job filling in the gaps here. And the New York Times is one of the ones that did the big articles a year ago, pumping up that this is gonna, this is a big thing. Right. So that they're part of the, this uh, public awareness campaign. We'll just say in order to bring in more interest and awareness and investors, and it has worked to an extent mm -hmm. when it comes to this stuff. So the last one, uh, let's see, was one hundred fourteen thousand in July. Uh, was the last copy, for, oh, last Super Mario Brothers that went for a lot of money. Uh, so the quote is, it stayed in the bottom of my office desk this whole time since the day I bought it. <laughs> they asked not to be identified. I never thought anything about it. And then uh, Valerie, who works for Heritage, said that the game was produced in late 86 during a brief period when the games were sealed with plastic shrink wrapped rather than sticker seal and before another packing, packaging variation was introduced in 1987. She says, since the production window for this copy and others like it was so short, finding another copy from the same production run in similar condi condition would be akin to looking for a single drop of water in an ocean. She said in a statement, never say never, but there's a good chance it can't be done. So what I thought about was, well, I'm going to look at my copies because I always do this. So, so they're saying there's a small window of time where these were produced. I don't know how they know that. Sure. Or, or what information they have, unless it's from Nintendo directly. I know they all they talk to each other and things like that. Because I went on my shelf and I had the same copy, obviously not sealed, of the one that sold for six hundred sixty thousand. Where they're looking for copies that do not have they have a trademark by Super Mario Brothers, but not by Entertainment System. I double triple checked, and this is the exact copy of the one that went for sale for that amount of money. And then I had another one, Ian, inside my control deck box, which came out in 87. Right. Maybe it was early or mid-87, so I don't know how they know this particular thing, but it's not like this is such a rare variant because I have two of them. And obviously, I, I know the value is in it being sealed, but like I'm saying, I don't know how they know that. I just don't. I, I need someone to explain to me how they know that for sure that it was a small production window because I'm not buying it right now because, like I said, I have two of them. Yeah, I'm curious so, how they know that as well. I'm very curious. And again, these are people that a few years ago were not in this market. Right. That now work for Heritage that are trying to tell me stuff like this. I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. But I need to know more versus just their, their opinion on it. I do. Um, the auction website allows bidders to make offers to the new owner starting at 990000 or more. So that's the thing I've seen in Heritage Auction that I don't understand. Where... If it's a collector really getting into it, it's being it's still on the site to drive more to drive more interest, where you can buy it through the site. So, well, who's who's purchasing this then? I think I think uh, the, the person's purchasing it and basically immediately relisting it and saying, if I can make this amount of money, I'll take it. The, but this is the other interesting part, and this is where I don't I, I'm not accusing anyone of collusion, but this is where it gets gets strange, and this is where the information has been known. According to the New York Times, the opening bid at the auction was three hundred ten thousand. So it wasn't like this started at ninety nine cents or a thousand dollars. So when you're telling me it starts at this opening bid, why was that price chosen? Who sure. chose it? And who put in these opening bids? Because to me, it's not. It's, it's no longer well. If 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 you get more than at least if at least two people are bidding on it, then that's what it's worth. Well, not so fast. Not if there is people that know other people are bidding on it. And there is some sort of concerted effort to drive the price up. Which I'm not saying happen, but this happens on bidding all the time at auctions. I see it at arcade auctions, for yeah. God's sake. Protect your investment or for pinball machines. Well, yep. someone who owns it or knows someone who owns it, they're going to bid it up to make sure it gets to a certain amount. And when you're saying, well, Pat, why would they do that with a game for this amount of money? Because there's a lot more money at stake than just this one game. Yes. It, a it, lot it, more money at it, stake. It, it, it affects what's... The other games in the market, other copies that might be produced. It, it validates it, so it, 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 it protects... It protects the earlier copy it, that only went for 114. Well, that means Ian, that one's worth over a million. These are the games, the high stakes games that are played with these sort of people. Right. These people that... Um, drive these markets and try to pull in other people who can uh, potentially lose money. That's what happens. To the game, again, I have the same materially, this is the same game that auctioned for 660000 This one doesn't, doesn't have a nice cellophane. That's the difference when it comes down to it. It's not the same as, again, it's not the same as comic book collecting. It's not the same. No. It's not the same at all. 
I have, and I have two of them. I have two of them. Um, so the article then goes on to say, uh, this is, in the past year, interest in factory sealed games has greatly expanded. I would argue that because when you say expanded, are you talking about price or general interest in the public? If it's still only 200 people buying these things, it's not greatly expanded. It's just more awareness. Yeah, of I happening. think that's that's particularly important. I think it's it's. I don't know that it's expanded. I think it's just gone up in value. Collectors have been able to quickly flip titles for thousands of dollars in profits. That's an irresponsible quote uh, by the New York Times. I'll just say that to the author because there's also people that are trying to buy this stuff that will fail to do so and spending money getting this stuff graded. Yeah. So there's always losers when it comes to this stuff. Um, it's an interesting article. Again, it goes into a little bit about what the narrative of Super Mario Brothers is, which is cute. Gives you more background about why it's important. Talks about you know the Super Mario Nintendo world opening up, and about the popularity of it going for that amount of money. Uh, so, Miss McLeckley from Heritage said, even so, the, the the degree to which this game was embraced outside the market has been nothing short of exceptional, and that aspect of the sale has certainly exceeded our expectations. Though I suppose we can't be too shocked. Who doesn't love Mario? Well, how can you be shocked when the minimum bid was 310000 If that's true, according to... I'm going to believe the New York Times. How can you be shocked? If, if you're going to be shocked, you, the minimum bid should not have been 310. Maybe it should have been 50. That's a, that's a weird statement. So again, be very careful when you see these articles produced. You have to know who the, who's commenting on them. Are there, are there alternate dissenting opinions there and they're almost never presented which i pointed out multiple times there's almost never a someone saying whoa, whoa let's pump the brakes slightly here and see what's happening yeah I, that's interesting to me it's always never a, very... a counterpoint never and i feel like that was different when comics were getting pumped up i feel like there was more counterpoints even at the time was there i wasn't paying attention i, to I it. feel like that but I, I could be wrong and there was also the ign article about it um he said about the trademark, and it's not like a collector cares if there's a trademark on the box or not, but its ability to use that information to figure out what the earliest printings were are. Yes. We don't give a shit about that. But, but the weird thing about that, uh, our pal Frank Safali pointed out, is that this is not the first or second printing of this game. No, it's like the They said fourth. it's a fourth, at least. Yeah. So, at that point, what are you buying? Like, yeah, what are you buying at that odd. point? Mm-hmm. There's no historical... I never heard of anything else saying, well, this isn't the first or second release of this Ian of this book it's the fourth print of, of the little prince out of, out, out of uh but it's of important Europe. because it was only it's important because we think for a small, for window, a of small time, window of time it was important see the games being played here yeah pardon the pun i think that's i think that is definitely strange and that's definitely different than comics usually the reprints and things like are that worthless are worthless or not worth as much right or like the walking dead much or like ninja turtles in the 80s did those multiple prints no one cares past the first print or maybe the second, I guess, for like the, the original Ninja Turtles. For a stuff. lot of it, anyways. Yeah, yeah. They, it, it, they want first first prints. This is, it, this is, I think that's probably the most interesting thing to me about this is that there is a constant effort to find delineable reasons yeah. for even later printings. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Um, Chris said, I think there's people who are jumping on it now thinking it may go up and probably will go up in the future and also... Also, just that they may never have an opportunity to buy one. Well, that's that could be an argument, but my argument would be, well, why didn't they buy the second print one a year ago sure. for a lot less? Yeah. Why did why why didn't they spend the money if they if they truly thought this is what they wanted? You would go for the earliest printing as possible and spend less money. That's not a crazy argument. <sighs> Maybe it's just FOMO now. Oh, it's, oh, definitely it's built in. But but now we're getting to the point though where we 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 should know not necessarily who are purchasing these items but we have to get to the point of having population reports for these games sure. going forward like comic books does that right. lets you know okay there's a whatever 50 action comics number one these are the great number that are graded nine and eight a seven you know we have to do that otherwise we won't know if they if they trickle these out and be like oh I got one sitting around sealed and maybe I'll get it I'm saying I have it but if I had one I would get it graded immediately to sell it. Yeah. And it's not, it's, it would be irresponsible not for the public to know that for some of these games. That, wow, people are spending hundreds of thousands or even $8,000 on a Spider Man 2600 that maybe WADA has graded 400 of them. And right. they, so you see what happens to that. Yeah. It goes from a $9,000 game to a thousand, but now they're still selling them every month. Not saying it's going to happen with this game, but 
to be transparent and to know that this isn't just a, a wild bubble, we should know what's happening here when it comes to this. We'll go. You want to go through some other sales that just happened from the same auction, just uh, for giggles and. and if laughs. you want, this stuff makes my eyes glaze over. <laughs> but people want to hear about it, Ian. People want to hear about it, uh, and it shows some of the craziness that's happening here. Uh, so this was the one that just ended. Uh, let's see. Past sold items. This is from this is from the April fourth uh, auction. Uh, by the way, the sealed Mike Tyson's punch out. Uh, right after asking for a hundred thousand on Pawn Stars, one went for a hundred and two thousand. What a coincidence, right? Wow. A a Mega Man sealed second print run went for one forty four thousand ninety thousand for a a Pokemon Crystal sealed uh, Game Boy Color. Uh, 72000 for a sealed Pokemon Red. I feel like we've talked about that one multiple times at this point. Yeah. Uh, so there's more than those than you think. A a Wright Brothers Super Mario 3, and this is where I say you are going to lose your money. A 9.8 graded sealed Super Mario Brothers 3, not the first print, went for $52,800. 9.8, probably pulled from a, from a, a carton. Uh, probably, I'm not saying it did for sure. 50000 for a sealed Final Fantasy 3 on Super Nintendo. Craziness. Um, this this one's interesting because this one's actually harder to find. A sealed John Madden uh, championship. Not super rare, but the rental a Genesis one. Championship edition. Oh. I got it on the shelf. Uh, 50000 for that. That's a weird one because, again, this is like, well, it's actually hard to find, but most people don't care. It, there's nothing sp- really special outside of it being, well, it's a limited re- a release of it. It's a weird one. Uh, Tang and Tetris, 36,000 uh, sealed on the NES. Uh, then you get to the really, really, really stupid, crazy stuff, like the collector's edition of a sealed Ocarina of Time going for 31,000. I think I know someone who has that. Our buddy Karnoff, who I brought up last week, uh, sealed for 28,800. I mean, I, lo- I love Karnoff. No one, not many people love No Karn- one loves Karnoff not, not that, that much. much. <laughs> not that much. I wanted the remake uh, of that. Um, Tomb Raider, a, a, Tomb, a Tomb Raider PlayStation, first production, 26,000. Nuts. Uh, and then there's a lot other ones. This is how you know it's weird. Like Super Mario Brothers, there was two other Super Mario Brothers 3 in, this, in the same auction, 21,000. And then the left bros went for the least amount of money, nineteen thousand. Even though it's a, a smaller, lesser grade, but that's actually the first run. It does nothing lines up in this market. No, it's there's all... so much weirdness going on. I'm like, this is why I say like, there, I would not be surprised if there's collusion because it doesn't make any sense anymore. If if a if a third or fourth print Ninja Turtles number one in a better condition go for three almost three times the amount of the first edition in a slightly less grade, it doesn't make any sense. It wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense anymore. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, that great Mortal Kombat for Super Nintendo, the, the edition we all love and, and cherish, uh, went for 19000 Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the most garbage version of that game. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not... It's garbage. So, this has got... This has given another, uh, you know, shot in the arm. And there's more. I mean, a, a Pokemon Gold for 13200 I have one sealed. It's not a 9.6. I got one sealed uh, later on. Oh, right, here's the one that I wanted to get to. Because this is the first Turbo Graphics one I remember uh, saying, uh, yeah. This is one we should talk about. Uh, Bonk's Adventure, a 9.8, went for 11400 This is the first time I can remember WADA doing a TurboGrafx one, or at least one that was a Bonk. Because, so when we talk about the TurboGrafx 16, for historic value, there are maybe three games that you can talk about, at least for North America. Bonk, Splatterhouse. Yes. Maybe legendary axe, or maybe la- blazing lasers. Like, like you're, yeah, yeah. But that's it. That's really it. I think Bonk uh, and Splatterhouse. Really, I think you're you're, you're stretching for a third. At least uh, I'm that, trying. That, that's like publicly. Like, like legendary axe had its own commercials. It, you know what I mean? It was a big title for it, as much as you can say. Great game. Blazing lasers became a later pack-in title, but that's it. So this went for eleven four. When I had a, a Turbo Graphics collector say, wow, that's like a $500 game in my world, a sealed bonk. Historically, sealed turbo games have not gone for a huge amount of money. No. And in this auction, you see them try to compare it to um, 
So, oh, this is a Super Mario Brothers of of the Turbo Graphics. But the awareness of Bonk is so low in the public eye that this isn't like, well, you know, most people know who Mario was, even your next door neighbor who's 70 years old. I They would not know who Bonk was. Like, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. It's not really a, a legacy that's known in the public. Um, but what's interesting about this is that there's a sticker on this that says free bonk. So this copy was laying around in NDC's warehouse and this was not like one that would first came out. That was saying, get a free bonk. You know, that would have been later on. Right. Because uh, the free bonk, was that the sequel? I have no idea. Because uh, my the copies I've seen usually don't have that. So uh, it's just interesting when you see what's happening here. That We're trying to make this bonk the new Super Mario Brothers. And like I said, I don't own... I'll be totally transparent. I own a seal splatter house. Uh, if I'm trying to pump that up, I say I'll, have, I'll be transparent. I own a seal splatter house. I do not own a sealed bonk, but it's interesting to see it go for that much. That little guy. Yeah, I would not have expected that. So that was that was a, a sort of a shock to to me to see. If it was like two grand, I'd be like, okay, it's interesting, but for that amount of money. But then again, I guess all bets are off at this point. If, yes. If, <laughs> if people are if people are spending ten grand on a San Andreas for PS2. I mean, all bets are off. Anything. Anything like, can go like for anything. This, I'm looking down this list, Ian. It's it's insane. It's just not... Some of this is not lining up in my head at all when it comes to this. Um, not just because of the titles chosen, because of the errors. Tekken 3, $6,600. Tekken 3. Three! Not even one. Three. Okay, this one I know someone definitely has. Uh, I've seen it. Some, uh, someone had this. A sealed Majora's Mask. 5,700. I, I know someone that has one of those. For sure. So, everyone out there, um, go go get that money. How about that factory sealed case of uh, six perfect darks that, that it's so easy to find a sealed perfect dark. Everyone has one. $4,800 for six a, a pack of six sealed ones. That's that's nuts. It's wild. Alright, we can go on more, but there's like, it's there's too many to talk about. Yes. At this point. So congratulations to everyone who's making the money at Heritage Auctions and WADA. You've got your people in the market now that are buying this stuff to throw in a closet, to throw their extra money in, their investment dollars that they have laying around. And uh, I guess we'll see where this leads over the next few years if this market remains established. Because I just know in some future time, Ian, someone's going to want a sealed um, NBA Action 98 on, on the Sega Saturn. Ah, who doesn't want that? They're going to they're gonna want that one. That's a, that's a title we've always talked about before. And last but not least, I have to bring these up because it's funny to see. The first time I've seen sealed um, uh, consoles for auction or new open box. I've owned a new open box uh, action set at one point. I, I almost couldn't give away for more than what I thought it was. So a new open box Super Nintendo the original looks like release went for thirty one hundred, and a uh, sealed ClickVision went for thirty two hundred. Wow. Okay. I do have a couple of Jeez. basically brand new old ass consoles laying around from the early eighties, but I don't think I could sell my Intellivision two for that much money. That's brand new. I don't think that's going to be a thing. No, I don't. Th- <laughs> I just somebody I don't tells think so. me that won't be a thing. Oh, our favorite color dinosaur went for twenty six hundred dollars. Ah, that that's the gem right there. That's that the gem. 